Captain Vector's log, stardate 76386.3. The past two weeks, two, have been a <laughs> bit rocky for Captain Schoff and I, but uh, we've both been hit with a wave of sickness in our homes. But I think the best medicine for us is podcasting for all of you. Welcome to Technological, a Star Trek shakedown, a short form podcast hosted by two hardworking dads who love to talk Trek. I am Captain Vactor, and with me each week, side by side in our co captain's chair on the bridge of the USS Technological, is my buddy Captain Shaw. How are you doing, Captain Shaw? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. I'm feeling a lot better. Nice. A lot better than last week. Uh, I will say, you do not sound. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling the best right now. But I said to myself, this is one of the highlights of my week. And <laughs> we didn't have a show last week, so I'm going to push through for all of our friends, fans, and family out there. What a captain uh, he is. Captain yes. my captain. And this week we're going to be talking about two episodes of Star Trek Prodigy, episodes 15 and 16, Masquerade and Preludes. And I think going forward, Shoff, we're going to be switching to a bi-weekly record schedule. So yep. we're going to be doubling up on these Prodigy episodes uh, up until the return of Picard, that season three of Star Trek Picard. We're going to go back to our weekly format, uh, yep. but just wanted to give everybody out there a little programming note we're going to be doing a bi-weekly schedule from now on uh, but each week if you're new to technological we're going to be traveling to a new planet to seek out new trek news as well as sharing our thoughts each episode of star trek prodigy and as a bonus we'll be recording our adventures in fatherhood with our popular segment called boldly dadding all right Chuff, let's set a course for the nearest planet maximum warp I sir, course, late in. I need some NyQuil. <laughs> All right, Captain Shaw, meet me in the transporter room where we'll beam down to the planet's surface to search for some Trek news. On my way, Captain Vector. Two to beam down. All right, Captain Shaw, let's scan the planet's surface for any sign of Trek news. Ooh. I found some Trek news and some NyQuil, Captain yeah. Vector. <laughs> the NyQuil is indigenous to this planet. It grows from the ground. Yeah. Uh, here's some highlights from Trek news. So uh, there's a bunch of Trek news, and we'll put it all in the show notes. But the one story that happened over the past couple of weeks that I wanted to talk about is, you know, as we know, Twitter was purchased by Elon Musk and... There's been a whole bunch of shenanigans that have transpired since he has acquired Twitter, uh, coming from blue check mark blunders to stock prices going down, all because people making fake Twitter accounts and saying <laughs> saying stuff in their tweets. Just total rambunctious chaos is what's happening on Twitter. Um, but in the Star Trek world, there's a couple of uh, Star Trek uh, ladies who have. Uh, added their two cents to the whole Elon Musk acquisition and um, and as well, just like the whole Twitter mess. So um, this news, uh, there's a couple different articles, but I'm going to kind of combine it. So we've got uh, Kate Mulgrew, who we know as Cap uh, Captain Catherine Janeway. Actually, I'm sorry, Vice Admiral Captain <laughs> yeah. Vice Admiral Captain. Vice Admiral Catherine Janeway, excuse me. And by the way, <laughs> Uh, listeners, I may cough from time to time. I apologize. Um, the cough is lingering. I'm feeling better, but the cough is lingering. So just deal with that. But anyways, <laughs> she is. She went full Janeway, <laughs> full Janeway <laughs> on this whole Elon Musk uh, Twitter mess. And she uh, wrote a tweet saying, <laughs> she said, that's it. I've seen enough. Security, please remand Elon Musk to the brig immediately. He <laughs> seems to have wandered over from the mirror universe <laughs> and is making a huge mess. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was pretty hilarious because this was coming off of um, now, granted, Kanye West is, is back to being banned from Twitter. But at the time <laughs> he was he was unbanned as well as Donald Trump. And uh, and all of that stuff in the parody accounts was just too much. So Kate Mulgrew was was adding her two cents. But in addition to that, um, 
prior to that whole scenario, as soon as Elon Musk bought out Twitter, Marina Sirtis, who plays Deanna Troy, Counselor Troy, she was like, peace. <laughs> she did not want to be a part of it. And she straight up left the platform completely. So, um, and she's not alone. There's a lot of other uh, actors and uh, celebrities and all sorts of stuff that are just like done with it. Um, I'm not really on Twitter that much anyways, so it really doesn't affect me. But it's funny to me because whenever I think of Elon Musk now, to me, it feels like the line from Batman, uh, from the Dark Knight, where he's like, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Elon Musk was like untouchable. He was like the coolest cat. Mm -hmm. And he was coming up with all sorts of great tech. And he was just known for being like an innovator. And, and then like stuff started to come out about him, like fathering a million children (laughs) to different people. Um, The aspects of this Twitter buyout and all the shenanigans that have followed from that. And then the way he's like treating Twitter staff and stuff. I'm like, there's no limit to it. And he's like no longer like the golden boy by any means. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're a Tesla owner. So I wanted to get your thoughts on Elon Musk and the whole Twitter shenanigans that are going on right now. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they, (laughs) um, Marina Sirtis specifically followed through on, she said, I'm going to leave if he takes over. Cause there was a whole thing about whether he would buy Twitter or not. Right. And he tried to back out of the deal, uh, but it ended up going through and he ended up purchasing it. And then she's like you said, she actually left. Um, so I would say kudos to her for standing b- by her, you know, standing on her, standing her ground. Because I also saw some actors like um, the Kingpin actor, I uh, forget his name now, but he was like, yeah, I'm going to leave if he takes over. And then, as soon as he took over, well, I'm going to stay a little longer, but just so you guys know, I'm going to leave. So kudos to her for standing her ground. Um, but my take on it is it's a social media platform. Twitter is not that important. If people don't, you know, I think my stance is if, if you don't like it, do like Marina Sirtis and leave. Don't use the platform anymore. It's not like, oh, this is Twitter is your, I, I can't even think of an, an analogy. Like it's, it's your God given, right? You have to have Twitter. You have to have that type of social media. There's so many different social media platforms and we we're seeing a bunch of alternatives now with Mastodon and hive. Um, yeah, that's so right. I think if you don't like it, you, you know, you don't have to be there. Cause I, the thing that I don't like is when people are like, yeah, I hate this, but they're still there and they're still typing yeah, on, yeah. still well, tweeting I think and that stuff. Just, the reason why they stick around is probably just for the train wreck. You know, like they they, they can't look away. They want to be around just in case something else crazy goes down. Yeah. Um, I I have a Twitter and I almost never log into it. Like even when I like the multiple podcasts, like back during Geek So to Speak days mm-hmm. or even Technological, I never go on Twitter. So, um. I don't even know why I have it, but <laughs> at the same time, like, I think I only have it because of podcasts. Cause mm. the one I have for my own personal account, I probably, it probably has dust on the hash, <laughs> the handle. Like yeah. they're like, we haven't seen you in years. You should probably <laughs> update your profile picture. Cause you look different now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of my, my two cents on it. Gotcha. Well, there you go. So yeah, there's a bunch of other news articles and, uh, uh, with your permission, Captain Vector, I'll go ahead and transmit them to our show notes for our listeners. Excellent, Captain Shaw. Thank you very much. Now, let's continue on our weekly mission with our episode discussion, our double dose, our our t- <coughs> two episode discussions. Two. Uh, like I said, episode 15 was entitled Masquerade, first aired November 24th, 2022. Directed by Sung Shin and written by Nikhil S. Jayaram. And we're going to throw up a red alert right now for both episodes, Shaf. Um, We're going to be discussing full spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and skip ahead to our boldly dadding segment. Yeah. Uh, First episode, synopsis. Trapped in the neutral zone, the crew encounters a rogue geneticist who sheds light on Dal's past. Um, So let's, let's... uh, get into this one, Shaf. 
What did you think about Masquerade? Uh, you know what? This show is very quickly finding like what it wants to be. Um, I thought that the first season felt, well, I guess we're still technically the first season, the first yeah, half the first of the half. season. Um, it felt just a little bit, um, what's the word inflated? Like it didn't have like a true goal in mind. Right. It felt like, like it felt like there were a lot of like one-off episodes. It didn't mm-hmm. really factor too much into the overall story, but now yeah. they're really dialing into the main arc. And I like where this is going. Uh, the idea that uh, Dal Dalarel, how do you pronounce his name? Dal. That's Dal-a-rel. a good. Yeah, I was. I was just say Dal. So yeah, I, I'm yeah, not a hundred percent. He, the fact that he's got basically like he was genetically engineered. He's an augment, and we already know a little bit about how Star Trek and Starfleet, how the Federation views augmented. Uh, individuals and they do not look fondly on <laughs> augmentation um, because of Khan, Nudi, and Singh, because of um, uh, in Strange New Worlds, we saw you know the, how they feel and the prejudice towards uh, augmented people. And by, in fact, by the end of the season, uh, number one gets uh, arrested mm-hmm. because she's an augment and she's been keeping it a secret. So the fact that all of them are trying to become part of the Federation, they want to become part of Starfleet. And now this wrinkle comes into play. That's going to be real tough. Like the doll is the very thing that they are absolutely against. So it certainly does not seem very likely that they're ever going to be part of Starfleet. Yeah. I think it's very interesting the way his character is kind of developing because at the beginning, he comes off kind of annoying to me and, as this season is progressing, I think he's starting to come into his own of a leader. And, you know, he's supposed to be the captain of this crew. And I actually like the actor that portrays Dal a lot. Um, we, we saw him on the ready room and I didn't know he was that old. I thought he was like a teenager, <laughs> but yeah, him and um, I'm for liking our name, but it seems like they're trying to have a love thing going on between them. Um, Gwendala, yeah, yeah. She's also like they had both actors on there, and, and it was like, oh, they're both a lot older than I thought they were. I thought they were, teenagers. yeah, yeah, they are. Um, but I, I like this cast a lot, actually. Um, but just those two in in general, in particular, um, have been doing a, a really good job. So I I like the way this, like you said, the way that this season is going. The second half, it has me a lot more interested in this serialized um, st- storytelling and and. It's getting to that that Trek. I feel like it's part of Star Trek, uh, yeah. part of that larger Star Trek brand. I think so, it yeah. helps too that you know the Romulans factor into this, but mm-hmm. also the aspect of the events of Nemesis. Oh yeah, um, are also sort of at play. That mm-hmm. that Picard is trying to uh, unite uh, and and sort of fo- form some kind of treaty with the Romulans. So. Um, and have then let there be peace. Now, granted, the Tal Shiar factor into it. Um, we get to see Murph uh, in action, which is cool. Um, and uh, as expected, he turns out to be like this kung fu master. You know? <laughs> um, <clears throat> he wasn't going to be useless for too long. We knew there was going to be s- something he was good at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but all in all, I think it was really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one thing that threw me off, and this is totally superficial, but the guy, his name is o- Okana. Is that, yes. I was just um, about to ask you about him. I like his character. Granted, he's seem, seemingly gone. I don't know if we'll see him towards the end of the season or if that was just him getting them to this spot. Uh, but I didn't expect him to have a ponytail. In all the pictures, like in all the s- shots and the scenes prior, he... It doesn't look like he has a ponytail. And then suddenly in this, in this uh, episode, <laughs> he just turns to the side and a big freaking mane. <laughs> and I was like, where has he been hiding this? It's crazy <laughs> to me. Like they must've always been shooting him. Like the way that he was like positioned, just face forward to the camera. Cause at no point, at no point did I see 
uh, any any ponytail. And and I don't know why it stuck with me, but it, I was like, this throws me. I'm not even, like he looked really cool. And then I saw the ponytail, and I was like, mm, no, he's he's not cool looking. <laughs> no, business in the front, party in the back. But that's too much party, if you ask me. Yeah, it's and it's funny that we're seeing him on all these different um, shows. He he appeared on Lower Decks. Um, he appeared on uh, Prodigy and then originated <laughs> on Next Generation. Yeah, that's right. Um, Billy Campbell is the actor. But yeah, he, he I, played the Rocketeer, did he not? You know, that so. is a good question. I think so. Yes, he did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, very interesting. I loved that movie as a kid. That was a great movie. That was one of my favorite films as a kid. That's a franchise they need to bring back. They need to reboot that one. Um, but yeah, I, I've, and he's, he's also appeared on uh, Voyager as well, but I'm interested to see if they bring in any other characters from other Trek shows. Uh, but yeah, like I said, masquerade overall, it was just, it was an interesting, um, you know, to find out Dal's origin and find out a little bit more about him and yeah, yeah. the adventure aspect of this episode was really good as well. The, they had a whole kind of, um, dramatic sequence where they were trying to get away in an elevator um that was yeah that space elevator thing i mean i feel like that's been used and overused like it's almost become a star trek trope oh yeah to have a space elevator um i mean lower decks made fun of it (laughs) and it was obviously in the star trek um was it the first one the well the rebooted star trek yes yes yeah it wasn't and they had the skydiving Um, yeah the skydiving thing yeah Mm -hmm. all of that was there um, and at the end, we get this reveal that uh, Ensign Asensia, I don't know if she's an Ensign, maybe she's not, uh, but Asensia is not who she says she is. She's actually a member of the Diviner's race. And don't, I, I have no, I can't remember what their race is called, <laughs> um, but he's, she's also from the future and has come back. And then we, we see more of that in the next episode. So let's, uh, what, let's switch gears and talk about preludes then. Too. Oh, yeah. So Preludes first aired December 1st, 2022, directed by Stephen Chang Un and Sung Shin. And there's like a million writers on this episode. <laughs> I was gonna say it's written by everybody. Yeah. Everybody you've ever not met, that's who did this one. <laughs> so uh if you really want to know the writers. It's on Wikipedia. You can look it up. Uh, synopsis for this episode. A Starfleet Admiral digs into the past of the Protostar crew. Meanwhile, the Diviner recalls his life's mission. Okay. So what did you think about Preludes, Shaw? Preludes was really good because we got to see the backstories of some characters that we have been with for now six, 16 episodes. And we really don't know anything about them. Um, we've seen stuff related to doll. We know more about Gwen. We know about, um, uh, I guess that was it pretty much. So we were learning about rock talk. We were learning about, um, Jenkum uh, Jenkum Pog. Yeah. Yeah. Jenkum Pog. And you know what's, (laughs) what's the best part about the Jenkum Pog thing that really wasn't, it was kind of just expressed, but not really explained is now we understand why he says he talks in the third person. Like, for a while, I was like, why is he doing this? <laughs> and in in a way that they didn't even have to say, like, they didn't have to provide the exposition or say, hey, you know, I used to say, I used to use, you know, normal, like, I this or, you know, me this. But then I, I had to start talking this way in third person. No, they just, like, very, very effortlessly explain it that it was just based on how much this droid was like hounding him for his name. <laughs> and, and now he's just stuck in this thing because he's so used to saying it. So, um, but we get to see the, the backstory, <coughs> excuse me, uh, backstory about Jenkum Pog. We also see more about zero and how she was captured, how they were captured. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I, I like this. I like this. And we also got to know more about, uh, the diviner and, and we now know where Chakotay is and yes. it's a little bit complicated because Chakotay is not only uh, on a distant planet, but he's in the future <laughs> and that's why they haven't found him yet. <laughs> so that's going to be an interesting one. Um, I wonder if we'll get Chakotay rescued by the end of the season. Probably. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of the episode? Yeah. This one also was a strong one for me <laughs> because 
it was interesting to find out the backstories of these characters that, like you said, we've been on this journey for 16 episodes with. And these are actually, those are probably my favorite characters, all the ones that got backstories in this episode. So all of that was great. The Chakotay um, stuff was interesting. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what they have in store for the finale for this season. Um, Because this, you know, it's interesting. We talk about prodigy as being for younger audiences and younger viewers, but it still has stuff for adults. And it has that avatar, the last airbender type of feel to it, where I could watch this with my son um, if he was a little bit older and still we both are kind of getting enjoyment out of it instead of, Oh, this is only made for children. There's yeah. nothing that adults yeah. can find interesting. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing where they wrap up this season and see what, um, what the, the driving narrative uh, device is behind that. So yeah, just, I think this was another solid episode. Yeah. A very strong episode, I have to say. And I think because they're, they're not shying away from the main arc now. Like they're mm. really in the thick of it. So, yeah. and we only have, we're in that second half of the, of the first season and we only have f- four episodes left. Um, and I know for a fact that the ninth and 10th episodes, I'm sorry, ninth and 10th, the 19th and 20th episodes of the season are a two-parter. So mm. um, I saw that on Wikipedia. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And, and based on our new structure of biweekly, we'll have, um, episode 17 and 18 uh, for in, in two weeks. And then we'll cover the uh, uh, 19 and 20 and we'll basically be covering the, the season finale with that episode too. So it's perfect. Yeah. It'll work out perfectly. Excellent. Y'all. That was our recap of episode 15 masquerade and episode 16 preludes. Now on to our weekly segment we like to call boldly daddy where we share some story or lesson that we learned during the past <coughs> week as dads to young children. And as I said, in my captain's log, we had a little bit of a rough week this last Ooh. week, Shoff. Uh, yes. what, what was going on in, in the Shoffman household? So leading up to Thanksgiving uh, on Sunday, the so the Sunday before Thanksgiving, um, we had made plans to go to the grocery store. We were going to get all like the fixins so we could cook at home. We weren't. Uh, we had ordered a turkey from Whole Foods because we did that in years past, and that's that's a nice easy way to go. You can buy a turkey that's already roasted. All you have to do is warm it up. So it only takes like an hour to an hour and a half in the nice. oven, and it's ready to go and perfect. So no fuss. And when you have two small kids, like. You got to lean into no fuss. Um, So, but we got, we were getting all the fix-ins. I was planning on, on making some pumpkin bread. I was going to bake a dessert uh, that is basically a copycat recipe for Marie Callender's, one of the Marie Callender's pies called Kahlua cream cheese. If any of our listeners are familiar with this pie, it is the best pie ever in the history of mankind. And uh, I was planning on making it. Uh, I had found a recipe online, so I was getting all the ingredients. But anyways, we were braving the crowds at multiple grocery stores on Sunday night. And uh, <coughs> by Monday night, I was sick as a dog. <laughs> and I can only imagine it was because of being exposed to everybody at the grocery store. Because normally, I'm kind of a homebody. I don't really get out a whole lot because I have to work. So even though like Sarah, my wife, might be out with the kids, I'm usually stuck inside working Mm. most of the day. So I don't get as many opportunities to get out and about, which means that my exposure to people is pretty minimal. So as far as germs go, unless I'm getting it from my family, I'm not getting it from anyone. So um, that's why I was like, it's got to be the grocery store shopping. But anyway, so I was really sick. Um, Massive fever, uh, coughing, congestion, achiness, straight up. Uh, I, I immediately took like a COVID test. It was not, um, it was negative. So I was glad, um, knock on wood, I have yet to get COVID. So that's awesome. Um, but I did end up with the flu. I found out, uh, by Wednesday I went to urgent care and I was in urgent care for 
and I'm not joking. This is not an exaggeration. I, I uh, went in in the morning at like 9.30. I was going in for a walk-in because I, obviously I didn't have like any, any appointment. They were like, yeah, we can get you in. It'll be about three hours. And I was like, whoa, okay. I went home because they were like, we'll call you. And you'll have like 15, 20 minutes to get down here. And I'm like, I'm about 15, 20 minutes away from this place. So I was like, this will work out perfectly. I'll just drive back as soon as I get a, a phone call. And I, I anticipate the phone call. So I go down there about two and a half hours uh, after my after 9.30. I ended up sitting there for an additional like three, four hours Damn. before I was finally seen. Meanwhile, I'm like sitting there. And by the time they checked my, my temperature, I had a fever of over 103. And I was just sitting there in the waiting room, miserable as hell. Dang. Um, finally get diagnosed with, uh, influenza A. So I got the flu, got hit pretty hard. And from what I've heard, a lot of people have gotten the flu in the past uh, couple of weeks. It's going around big time and people are getting like the flu compounded with COVID and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was just the flu, but anyways, um, within like a day, my daughter, Emily, who's a little over two, she got sick and Mm -hmm. then Within like a day of that, Sage, my seven-month-old, got sick as well. So three out of four of us in the household are sick, very sick. Coughing, fevers, just were out for the count. I couldn't work. Um, Meanwhile, my wife is trying to manage the household and all of us. And caring for sick children when you are also sick is so hard. And I know you're going to talk about something similar. It is such a challenge. And I will tell you, there were a couple times over this pa- the, the past week, I broke down. I was in tears. I couldn't, I, like, I was, I was overwhelmed because I was so sick and I was so miserable, but I was trying to, like, do whatever I could to, like, support Sarah and, and still show up and still help with the kids. But there was only so much I could do. And I couldn't hold them. I couldn't get my germs on them either. So, like... Uh, I, I was, you know, I was felt so helpless and I knew that really all I, (coughs) the best way I could help was to get better. Mm. And that of course took time. So, um, but I've been struggling with a lot of insomnia as a result of some of the meds I was taking, I think. And that's been a challenge too. So it's just been a crazy week and shout out to any dad, any parent who in the past month, because of all the holidays and whatever else has gotten sick and is still trying their best to support the family in whatever way they can. That is insanely difficult. And I would say the last week was the most challenging week of the entire 2022 for for me. So uh, I'm so glad that that is over with and behind me because when I was in the thick of it, I thought it would never end. And I was, I I was beside myself with how, Mm -hmm. how frustrating the whole experience was so um so yeah but anyways that's that's my piece and then the, the on the bright note uh I celebrated my one year anniversary wedding yeah. anniversary with my wife uh yesterday so that was that was great and uh she got me this comic book yeah it's so cool uh it's got a bunch of pictures from the wedding and stuff yeah. uh in I like a there. comic book panel form yeah vector was there <laughs> So anyways, I thought that was really, really cool. But anyways, that is... uh, that's, that's been my past couple of weeks. Just been a crazy, crazy time. And I got to give it up for any parent who can um, successfully maneuver that. And we don't have any help. We don't have any support, no friends or family. So it's like when you're by yourself and you got to do it all, man, it shows you what you're capable of. It shows you what's inside you. Um, and that's, and it's always remarkable. So, Vector, yeah. your turn, my friend. Well, kudos to you, Shoff, because Thank I've you. also been going through uh, something similar, although um, everyone got sick. Uh, we didn't have anyone not get sick in my household um, first. Which is harder, I think. I think that's got to be harder. Yeah. it. It's uh, we, we went through this last year when we went, we visited my parents in Texas and my dad was sick at the very end as he was taking us to the airport. Um, he was coughing and he was sick. 
And so we think we, we caught it from him. And then as soon as we got back here, everybody was laid out. Oh. Um, so this is our uh, second time in this in similar situation. So my son, Ezra, <coughs> he got sick first. Um, he was coughing and um, runny nose and everything. And then my wife got sick and she got uh, actually it was really bad, her throat and her nose. Um, and then now I am sick. Um, now mine has been the least, um, sy- symptoms, I guess I've had the least symptoms out of everybody, but it's definitely, like you said, challenging when you don't, um, you don't have the strength to be there to support everybody the same way you would if you were feeling, uh, better, and so I've, I went through that this week where it was like, man, I'm nodding off because it's like I'm so tired, but my son is still, you know, running around. I still have to take care of him. And my wife, kind of the same way, um, she hasn't gotten a lot of sleep over the last course of the week. Um, so we've, we've both been um, just kind of trying to get as much rest as we can, trying to take medicine. And, uh, they, they both went to the doctor last, uh, let's see, two days ago. Um, I did not go to the doctor, but I think I'm fine. I'm just, my, uh, throat was hurting really bad earlier this week. And even though it sounds like it now, it's, it's no longer hurting. It was hurting when I would swallow anything would hurt. Mm. Um, now I'm just having a little bit of congestion, a little bit of runny nose. But other than that, I was, I've just been tired recently. So it, I, I, I second your um, shout out to everybody that has dealt with this in the past and who's, who's dealing with it now, being a parent and your children getting sick. And I'm thinking about the time when our children are going to be in school, and that's a place where a lot of um, sickness is spread. And I, I know during 2020 and, and last year, probably this year as well, a lot of kids spreading COVID between each other. That's kind of a, a worry that I have of my son going to school and catching COVID. Yeah, that's true. And then bringing it back and giving it to us. That's another thing. So, yeah, it's just another um, thing to add to the list of worries. But I'm very, uh, like you said, kind of it shows you what you can withstand and what you can Uh, go through it and come out on the other side. So yeah, this week has not been great, but I'm looking forward to next week when I'm sure we'll, we will all be feeling better. Oh man. I hope, I hope you all are on the mend soon. That's, that's so hard. That is so hard. Um, Putting it out there to our listeners who are parents. um, What have you encountered? Have you also had similar issues with uh, getting sick with your kids? What do you do in these scenarios? How do you how do you get through? What's your uh, what's your secret? Um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, one of the greatest ways to do that is if you go into our show notes at the way bottom, there is a link that will bring you to Anchor, which is our our podcast platform, and it'll let you leave us a voicemail. And uh, if you've been listening to us week over week, then you know that. Um, we have had listeners uh, reach out to us that way, and we've played the voicemail uh, in our episodes. And we would do the very same thing uh, for you if you did if you uh, reached out to us. So we would really encourage it when we ask you questions or we're looking for engagement. Um, we would love, love, love if you would chime in, and we'll absolutely feature you during our boldly dating segment um, in future weeks as well. Yes, so. I would also. Um, I forgot to say, my son, what he had was RSV. Um, if any uh, yes. parents out there um, have any RSV stories, share those with us um, on our voicemail, and we will be happy to play it here on the show, Technological. If you would be so inclined, we would love to have you share us with all of your friends and family who love Star Trek. Word of mouth is a big way that, that uh, helps us out spreading the Trek love. Um, If you're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, if you uh, share some of our stories or share some of our clips, that also would help um, comment on those. Let us know what you're enjoying, what you're not enjoying, that we are at Treknopod 
on all of those sources and places. We're also on YouTube, which is another great place. If you're watching this right now, you can leave us a comment down below and share us. That helps us greatly um, to grow on YouTube. So we, we greatly appreciate all of your support. And if you'd um, like to, we would love for you to subscribe to our show um, on all of those platforms that I mentioned on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can actually leave us a five-star review which would also greatly help us um, in just kind of growing our channel because we're still a small podcast at this point, but really word of mouth is what helps us grow and helps us on all of those platforms. So if you're enjoying it, uh, we would love for you to spread the, the enjoyment to all of your friends and families. Um, we also have some recent Apple podcast reviews, yeah, uh, which we would love um, to give some some love back uh we got a uh listener groovin groovinator uh, yeah groovinator it looks like he left it on the 18th of november yes and sorry that it we don't get these right away because they don't notify us when we get the reviews yeah. it's so weird but yeah if you've ever if you're not if you don't have a podcast yourself you wouldn't know this but Unless we're actively going into the app and looking to see if someone's left us a rating or review, there is no other way for us to know. So um, we appreciate that you left it, but that's, we apologize for not shouting you out sooner because this is the <laughs> first time we, we found <laughs> out about it. Yes. Um, November 15th, we got a five-star review. Thank you very much. J Rivs 221. Um, so, Vector, um, I'm going to read these real quick. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So the Groovinator said, um, he titled it Live Long and Podcast. I love it. That's cute. Um, <laughs> he said, as a human being, I was raised on Star Trek. Some of my earliest memories, um, I shouldn't say he, I should say Groovinator. I don't know if it's he. Um, as a human being, I was raised on Star Trek. Some of my earliest memories as of sitting in the couch with my dad, watching Captain Kirk get busy with green ladies <laughs> <laughs> and, and fight rubber monsters. <laughs> While it's always been my second favorite star franchise. Oh, you must be a Star Wars <laughs> fan. I've loved it as long as I can recall. I finally got around to this podcast recently as it took me a while to catch up on the new shows. Schaff and Vactor give in-depth reviews that are digestible to the casual fan while being informative to the diehard geeks. I've certainly learned a lot about the rich, richness of the trek averse from them. As a father myself, I get a kick out of their conversations about dadhood, balancing work, life, and kids. Their passion for Star Trek, their families, and geekhood shines through with every episode. Keep them coming, fellas. That's amazing review. Thank you so much, Groovinator. Thank you. And then uh, Jay Ribs 221 he said, it's a trektastic time. He said, so much fun listening to these two Trekkies discuss one of my favorite franchises of all time. Well done, Captains Shock and Factor. Thank you, Jay Ribs. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, so if you want to be awesome like those two, uh, <laughs> you can leave us a five-star review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about uh, Trechnological. We're going to be back, Shoff, in two weeks for our <laughs> ongoing recap and review of Star Trek Prodigy Season 1. But don't forget, in the meantime, you can always check out our co-captain's commentary that we recorded with uh, my good friend David Reed from yeah. Dial the Gate, um, which is a Stargate podcast, another star franchise. Uh, but we had a great, uh, lot of, a great deal of fun talking about Star Trek 3. Yeah, yes. Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Yeah, so you will have a great time as well. Um, in the meantime, in between time, uh, we we got some some more epic content for you. But I think this week, Shoff, our mission of the week is complete. Factor and Shoff here, two to beam up. Live long and prosper. Yeah.